Good morning, MLBC. This is Hannah here coming from Bristol. Um, welcome to our online service. It's so great to have you join us this morning and we hope you enjoy the service where Marilyn will be speaking on simplicity. See you guys soon.
I come in simplicity Longing for purity To worship you in spirit and truth Only you Lord, strip it all
Our first reading is taken from Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 26. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? the man inquired. Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honour your father and mother and love your neighbour as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Our second reading is taken from Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Good morning, MLBC. Today we are continuing our sermon series titled Rooted on Earthing Holy Habits. We have heard about various holy habits that we can engage with. Example, meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. These holy habits are a means of grace by which God transforms us into the image of Jesus Christ. The the habit or spiritual discipline we are considering today is simplicity. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would speak through me and let the words of my mouth and the prayers of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. So what comes to mind when you hear the word simplicity? What is simplicity? So simplicity is defined as quality or state of being simple, unmixed, freedom from duplicity or cunning, and freedom from pretentious lifestyle. It's defined as plainness, as of dress, language, and life. In other words that are uh, Synonymous to simplicity are unity, purity, and integrity. So the words translated as simplicity in the Bible, the references are 2 Samuel 15, 11, Romans 12, 8, 2 Corinthians 1, 12, and 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, can also be rendered as single-minded devotion or undivided devotion to Christ, integrity, or generosity. So in, in Luke 10, 38 to 42, Jesus went to visit Mary and Martha, his friends and sisters to Lazarus. Mary got very busy preparing for the Lord whilst Mary sat at Jesus' feet, listening to what Jesus taught. Martha complained about Mary not helping, and Jesus said, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details, 
there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. So Martha was certainly doing good things, getting ready and preparing for Jesus, and making sure everything was in order. But Jesus commended Mary for sitting and listening to him. In, in simplicity, our focus is on Jesus Christ. Our total devotion is to God. He is the center from where everything else in our life flows. So I read this analogy by Richard Foster, which really brought clarity um, to, to my thinking. So it's an analogy of coming into God. So we come into God with, with all that we are. So imagine coming into God from the periphery with your focus and gaze on God. You keep your eyes fixed on him. And as you do that and still come towards him, you see him more and more and more clearly. You are in his presence and you enjoy all that there is in his presence his love, joy, peace, contentment, his tenderness. But as you continue in his presence, you get to know his heart and you grow in his nature. So God's nature of love, righteousness, compassion, mercy, his justice, his generosity and kindness and all his, his nature grow in you but there are things that come between you and God. So your view is obscured. As we come, as we continue to come, the Holy Spirit <clears throat> show us the issues and the things in our lives that obscure our view um, of God. And he gives us power and grace to, to rid ourselves of these distractions. My question is, where is your focus set? What things, even good things, come between you and God? In the passage read to us from Matthew 19, a young rich man asked Jesus what good deed he needed to do to have eternal life. Jesus said, keep the commandments of God. So he asked, which ones? Jesus told him the commandments to keep. And the man said, I have kept all that, but what do I still lack? Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, if you want to go all out and follow me, sell all your possessions and give to the poor and you have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And the man turned away sad because he had a lot of possessions. This man's possessions and wealth had become a hindrance to his following Jesus, who would actually give him eternal life, the abundant life he wants, he wanted. Possessions are not bad. Possessions are not bad in themselves. They are good as God created all things for enjoyment and blessing. But our possessions and the desire to have more can come between us and God. God is able to give us a correct perspective on, on our wealth and our possessions and to save us from, from the entanglement of it. Jesus spoke about laying up treasures in heaven by using our earthly possessions or wealth to help others. Jesus warned his disciples that no, no one person can serve two masters. We can't serve God. We can't be slaves to God and equally be slaves to money or wealth. In, in Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, seek first, was talking to his disciples about various things um, and, and, and why they should not worry about anything. He said, seek first his kingdom, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and all other things will be added. Seeking first God's kingdom leads to an ordering of the rest of life in, in ways that please God. 
Seeking God's kingdom first builds trust in our hearts and frees us from anxiety. We learn and know that whatever we have is a gift from God, that whatever we have will be cared for by God, and whatever we have is available to others. And we, we, we rest in the knowledge that God provides all that we need. When we see God's first, our possessions and wealth have proper place in our lives and they don't and will not rule us or compete with God for our attention. We also see ourselves as God sees us without an inflated or diminished sense of self-worth. And we do not feel oppressed to please people. So how do we practice or cultivate the, the inward and outward habits of simplicity? I've listed a few things and they are, they are just guides to help us. They are not meant to be tick box exercises or, or things that we, we will do that will give us brownie points before God. They, they, they help us to practice and get into an inward or outward attitude of simplicity. So, we, we can develop simplicity through the various holy habits that we talked about the, the last few weeks, studying God's word, praying, meditating on God's word, and, and obedience to God. All these habits reveal God's heart to us, for us, for our community, and for our world. By being in constant communion with God, we can set all our lives before God and we can set ourselves exercises of consciously asking God to be with us in everything we do, at school, in our workplaces, as we walk around, um, praying for people, or, and, and, and these little exercises to, to bring God into our consciousness in the moment-to-moment living we can observe quiet and quiet times or silence that allows us to make time and space to listen to god god is always speaking but there's so much noise and business in our lives that we usually don't hear so we can set time to sit sit with the lord walk run and enjoy his company and in, in, in doing this, we may have to put and fast from a lot of the noise generators in our lives, particularly our technology and the phones we have, our television, so that we, we, we make minutes um, to, to, be, to spend time with God. We can practice thankfulness. Be consciously thankful for all we have and for all that God does for us. And, and also consciously reminding ourselves that we are not the center of the world. We are not invincible and we are not indispensable. And therefore, we should not feel compelled by ourselves or by others to say yes to everything. Um, and in so doing, we can make time to spend with God and sometimes times to rest or have fun with our family. Some outward things we can do is to look at possessions in a different light, buy things for their usefulness rather than the status they give us. We can develop a habit of giving things away if the are things that are becoming, we are becoming so attached to or, or we don't need, we can give them to others who really need them. We can develop a, a deep appreciation for, for creation, enjoy creation, enjoy the, the, the plants, go out into nature and, and observe nature and enjoy the, the beauty of creation. And, and we would have to reject or think about things that breed oppression to others, um, seek justice, seek social justice in our communities and in our world. And all these things are, are good, but 
we have to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Um, so these, all these practices then do not become the focus of, of our attention, but God himself. So I'd like to ask, how is God encouraging you to simplify your life? And what will you do this week or not do in order to allow time to spend with Christ or more time to spend with Jesus? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus Christ who lived with a heart focused on you. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. As we focus on you, Lord, order our lives in the ways that please you. Help us to live in simplicity and freedom that Christ gives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for the word today from your servant and I hope you all have been blessed and been nourished and strengthened to carry on for another week. And each day we just got to continue to give God thanks for his goodness to us through the word. Enjoy the week and join us after Zoom for a good special time of activities. Bless you all. Love and prayers.